Can you get a sheet? You know where the sheets are? The song? Okay. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bha Girivaradhari Jaya Gopi Janavala Bha Girivaradhari Yashorananda Brajajana Ranjana Yashorananda Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari <coughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Om Mr. Pad, Padamahansa Purdika Church, Astotur, the Shishin Mad, Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada, Kijai. Iskan BBT, founder of Church, Srila Prabhupada, Kijai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad, Padamahansa Purdika Church, Astotur, the Shishin Mad, Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Saraswati Thakur, Kijai. Ananda Koti Vaishnavin, Kijai. Nama Charge, Srila Haridas Thakur, Kijai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. Now, I don't remember chanting that verse. I think we just did that one verse, 14. Right? I kind of... Okay, we're on page uh, 438 at the top in almost all of your books. Otherwise, it's 1015. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय On this 10th day of January 2023 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in Chapter 10 entitled The Opulence of the Absolute. Text 15 on page 438, most likely. Svayam evatmanatmanam Vetha Tvam Purushottama Bhuta Bhavana Bhutesha Deva Deva Jagatpate Swayame Vatman Atmanam Vetha Tvam Purushottama Bhuta Bhavana Bhutesha Deva Deva Jagatpate Swayam Evatman Atmanam Vetatvam Purushottama Bhuta Bhavana Bhutesha Deva Deva Jagatpate Swayam Evatman Atmanam Vetatvam Purushottama Bhuta Bhavana Bhutesha Deva Deva Jagatpate Naveen, but take that off the floor. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, put it, you can put it under the book. Go ahead, Michael. Vindavan. Swayam Evatman Atmanam Vetatvam Purushottama Bhuta Bhavana Bhutesha Deva Deva Jagatpate Ross Swayam Evatman Atmanam Vetatvam Purushottama Bhuta Bhavana Bhutesha Deva Deva Jagatpate Go ahead, Naveen. Svayam evatman atmanam Vetatvam purushottama Bhuta bhavana bhutesha Deva Deva Jagatpate Ladies. <laughs> Svayam evatman atmanam Vetatvam purushottama Bhuta bhavana bhutesha Deva deva jagatpate Okay. Svayam, personally, eva, certainly, atmana, by yourself, atmanam, yourself, veta, no, veta, no, tvam, you, purusha uttama, O greatest of all persons, Bhuta Bhavana, O origin of everything, Bhuta Isha, O Lord of everything, Deva Deva, O Lord of all the demigods, Jagatpate, O Lord of the entire universe. Arjun said to Krishna, Indeed, you alone, yourself, by your own intern, you know yourself, uh, uh, excuse me, Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own internal potency, O Supreme Person, origin of all, Lord of all beings, God of gods, Lord of the universe. Purport. The Supreme Lord Krishna can be known by persons who are in a relationship with him through the discharge of devotional service, like Arjuna and his followers. Persons of demonic or atheistic mentality cannot know Krishna. Mental speculation that leads one away from the Supreme Lord is a serious sin, and one who does not know Krishna should not try to comment on the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is the statement of Krishna, and since it is the science of Krishna, it should be understood from Krishna as Arjun understood it. 
It should not be received from atheistic persons. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.11, Vadanti tat tatvaras tatvang jnanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabdhyate. The Supreme Truth is realized in three aspects, as impersonal Brahman, localized Paramatma, and at last as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So at the last stage of understanding the Absolute Truth, one comes to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A common man or even a liberated man who has realized impersonal Brahman or localized Paramatma may not understand God's Personality. Such men, therefore, may endeavor to understand the Supreme Person from the verses of the Bhagavad Gita, which are being spoken by this person, Krishna, which are being spoken by this person, Krishna. Sometimes the impersonalists accept Krishna as Bhagavan, or they accept his authority. Yet many liberated persons cannot understand Krishna as Purushottama, the Supreme Person. Therefore, Arjuna addresses him as Purushottama. Yet one still may not understand that Krishna is the father of all living entities. Therefore, Arjuna addresses him as Bhuta Bhavana. And if one comes to know him as the father of all living entities, still one may not know him as the supreme controller. Therefore, he is addressed here as Bhutesha, the supreme controller of everyone. And even if one knows Krishna as the supreme controller of all living entities, still one may not know that he is the origin of all the demigods. Therefore, he is addressed herein as Deva Deva, the worshipful God of all demigods. And even if one knows him as the worshipful God of all demigods, one may not know that he is the supreme proprietor of everything. Therefore, he is addressed as Jagatpati. Thus, the truth about Krishna is established in this verse by the realization of Arjuna. And we should follow in the footsteps of Arjuna to understand Krishna as he is. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshur unmilitam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So, this chapter is called Vibhuti Yoga. Uh, Vibhuti means opulence, uh, an aspect of Krishna's greatness. And uh, we've had the four key verses from 8 to 11, in which Krishna declares himself to be God and explains how those who understand that worship him and how he responds by revealing himself more and more. And then Arjun then declares for all of us to hear, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Param Ambavan. He accepts Krishna as the Supreme. Param Brahman means the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Abode, the Supreme Purifier, like that. And he establishes the idea that it's not just him speaking, but this is simply according to Parampara. And he says uh, that Narada, Devala, Asita, Vyas, they all say the same thing about you. And you're, you're telling me the same thing, that you're the Supreme Personality. And then he accepts what Krishna says is true. And during these, in these purports, Prabhupada is saying that if we want to know Krishna, if we really want to get this divine revelation, we need to follow in Arjuna's footprints meaning that we need to accept him as such and then serve him according to his instructions in this book, Bhagavad Gita. That's one of the themes here. So then uh, Arjun is continuing to glorify Krishna, and as we see this uh, purport, especially near the end, these are different names of Krishna. Uh, Purushottama. Now there's a whole chapter called Purushottama Yoga 15, where Krishna will explain more about what that means, that he's the supreme person, especially the, within the heart. And Bhuta Bhavana, Bhutesha, Deva Deva, Jagatpate, these are all progressive names of Krishna describing his different glories. And the idea in, in the purport is well, how can one know Krishna as he is in full, or as, as full as we can in our infinitesimal state? And the answer is that it's all a question of his own mercy, how much he, he wants to reveal about himself. There's this verse that probably would always quote, I listen to a lecture every morning, and he quotes it often in his, in his lectures. Atakshi Krishna namadi nabave grayam indreyai, sevan mukhi jivado svayam evas Which means that with our present senses and mind, 
which are saturated with the modes of nature and the karma, impure, in other words. We cannot understand the real nature of the name, form, qualities, and pastimes of Krishna. It's impossible. We can understand something about them, but we can't understand them in full and as they are. But if one begins serving Krishna, Sevan Mukhi Jivaro, beginning with the tongue, meaning chanting, chanting, and hearing, of course, and tasting prasad, then we become purified and progressively Krishna reveals himself. So the idea is that the knowledge of Krishna as he is, in the full personality and with all of the, the wonderful qualities that we read about here in the Bhagavad Gita and in the Srimad Bhagavatam, is a question of our being uh, submissive servants willing to undergo the process for purification so that the senses, mind, and intelligence become enlightened by Krishna from within. Don't forget he's always in our heart. And as he explains in those four verses, how does he respond when someone accepts him as God and tries to worship him, chiefly by glorification? Machitta, madgata prana, bodhi antak parasparam. What do my devotees do? Well, they place their mind on me, they dedicate their lives to me, and then they get together and glorify me. And in this way, they enjoy tushanti chadamanti. Tushanti means great satisfaction, ramanti means transcendental pleasure. This is collective glorification and service of Krishna. That's what bhakti is all about. The yogis, let me be alone. I want to go alone, right? There's some mountain somewhere in a cave and meditate, you know. And uh, first of all, it's very difficult in this age. And second of all, that's not the, the, the greatest way to perform bhakti. In other words, what is Krishna more pleased, pleased at? You know, you, you, you're trying to become a devotee and then give devotion, give him to someone else. The preaching is a very important part of the sadhana also. This is Lord Chaitanya's teachings. He, he's, he's showing us how it's possible to become fully God-realized at the highest level in this age. Even with our Kali Yuga bodies, we don't live very long, always disturb so many... Yes, you just chant Hare Krishna, come together, uh, you know, learn from the Acharyas how to worship the deity. It's feasible. It's feasible. Prabhupada showed it. That's what, you know, this temple is the manifestation of that. So, but the main point I wanted to make is that uh, how, do, how can one... Uh, actually understand Krishna in full. And this verse that Prabhupada quotes in, in the purport here, you notice that, Vadanti Tattvaviras? This is the definition of the three levels of realization, Brahma, Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. And they're progressive. It's described, I think, in the, in the purport to this verse in the actual Bhagavatam. You're approaching a mountain in the distance. First you just see it as, 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 a, as a vague shape, you know, this is covered with mist, you know, in the morning, and so you don't, you don't really see many detail, but you know, there's, there's something really impressive out there. That's Brahman realization. The, the white light is just the, the greatness of, of pure spirit, but you don't see the details. And the impersonalists take that as the absolute truth. They take the idea that the, that the, the ultimate reality is Brahman undifferentiated nirvishesha. Does that mean, word ring a bell? <laughs> Pada Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. No details, no varieties. You know, I mean, our life is all about variety, right? Even materially, it's a reflection of the spiritual life. There's colors, there's activities, there's emotions, there's senses, right? In the person. So the impersonal thing, well, that's all Maya. That's why they call Maya bodies. So the spiritual world must be no senses, no activities, simply pure consciousness. You know, and and no birth, old age, disease, and death. You don't take birth. But that's not what we are as spirits. We also have these uh, spiritual bodies with spiritual senses in our original form, our swarup. So mukti doesn't mean merging into the absolute and without any, any activities or anything like that. It, mukti is defined in the, in the Bhagavatam. There, there's ten subjects matter, matters, and one of them is mukti. In the second canto, there's kind of a table of contents, one of the, one of the, 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 the several verses, and they just define what each of these are. So mukti is one of the subjects. And what does it define as? Mukti hitpa anyata rupam swarupena vavastati. Mukti is not just merging into Brahman. Mukti is giving up all these other forms that we have. Just like we're now in a material form, and it's constantly changing. Tomorrow, we may not notice it, but the body will be changed a little bit, right? And gradually, you can see the change. So this is one of our forms. And even in this one body, we have so many forms. What to speak of the thousands of other bodies we've had in all kinds of, you know. So that's, that's other, other rupas. Those are not really our, our original form. They're constantly changing. We have an eternal sarup that doesn't change. So mukti hitva anyata rupam, getting free of all these other forms, 
which ultimately means birth, old age, disease, and death, and swarupain vivastu, being fixed in one's swarup, his eternal spiritual form that we had in the spiritual world, which just suits our personal rasa with Krishna relationship. Yeah, it may be a gopi, it may be a gopa, it could be a cow. We could be very satisfied as one of those wonderful trees. Everything's fully conscious there. And giving Krishna the different fruits that he wants and bowing down when he comes. The gopis sing of those trees. When the gopis are home doing their chores, they're always singing of Krishna in the forest and they're visualizing what's going on. So one of the, one of the uh, pairs of verses, the beautiful songs of the gopis in the 10th canto. They sing, Anucharai sumanavarnata birya adipura shihivata labhuti. So they say, Anucharai. Anucharai means his companions, those who, who you know, are cavorting with him in the forest. What are they doing? They're singing of his glories. They're describing his different pastimes and, and enjoying, and he's enjoying hearing it. Anucharai Sumanavarna, Adi Purusha, the original person, Ivachala Bhuti. Uh, it's as if he's, it is as if the Supreme Person, as if, they don't know he's God, as if the Supreme Person is surrounded by all his spiritual energies. This is, you know, the Gopi Singh. So, Vanacharo, uh, going in the forest, Giri, and on the side of the mountain, Mount Govanan, Giri Tatesha, the Venunavi, the guy, he plays the flute to call the cows. He can actually uh, articulate the names of the different groups of cows with his, with his flute. And so he's calling them, and they're coming, and so forth. So what are the what are the how do the uh, the the trees and everything react there? This is a great verse. Vanalatastha the vaatmani vishnum vyanjayanti hiva pushpa palaja pranata bhada vata paamanu dhara prema rishta dana bhuva bhushusma. So he says vanalatast means the creepers in the in the forest, and the, and the trees they uh, they suddenly they say, oh, Krishna's coming with all his cows and coward friends playing his flute, so they're very ecstatic. Remember, they're all fully conscious, and they blossom. You've all seen those uh, the, those what, what is it called where, where it shows the a tree blossoming all in, in really quickly and showing all the fruits, time lapse photography or something. So that suddenly they all blossom. And they have their fruits, and they're so, suddenly they're heavier, and their heavy ba- bows causes them to bow <laughs> down to Krishna. <laughs> and they're, 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 the, the creepers are bowing down, and the honey is flowing from the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, side, the, or the, or the sap is coming, whatever. So they're worshiping Krishna in that way. They're fully conscious. You know? So that's what's happening in Vrindavan, in Goloka Vrindavan, you know, and in the replica here. So that's, and every day is different. There's always a new adventure, you know, that Chris is going on. So that's the absolute truth, being situated in that eternally. Every day there's a new adventure, you know, with Krishna and, and, and engaging in loving relation with him. So uh, that's the ultimate. Now, so there's, there's the Brahman, then there's the Paramatma, who's situated in everyone's heart. And that, that's a personal, there's a person there, but there's not much rasa going on. You're simply aware and, and conscious, you know. But the ultimate is uh, Bhagavan. Bhagavan means the supreme personality of Godhead, full of six opulences, engaging in all these pastimes. So that's what we, that's what we want to realize, that's to find here in this um, verse in, quoted in the purport. And in, in, in the actual Bhagavatam, Prabhupada gives the analogy of approaching this mountain, as I mentioned, you know. First you just see a vague shape in the, in the distance, you know. And then as you approach, oh, you see there's, there's a, uh, you know, so many uh, varied uh, living entities on there. And uh, you get a more idea of the, of the shape of the mountain and the, the, the separate, uh, you know, reality of it. But then if you actually get on the mountain... And you can meet, meet some, maybe there's some people who lived in up, you know, that have a mountain home or something. And you get all the details. So the idea is that full realization of God means the full realization of the personality of Godhead and his environment and, and the whole world of uh, spiritual world. That's the ultimate. Not, not this vague, because it's not secure. If you're simply free of birth and death, that's great. But how can you be satisfied just with that? Suppose you're in the hospital, you got in an accident, and you're in traction, you know? So your whole meditation is, boy, when am I going to get out? When is my leg going to feel better, you know? And then finally, so I can get out. That's, that, that's your meditation, right? But then when you finally, you're, you're getting out of the hospital, you know, you may have a cane or something, you know? Is that, is that the ultimate? Oh, I'm finally out of the hospital. You sit down on the curb, 
I'm, I'm in samadhi, you know. No, you get back to your job. You, you go back home. You, you resume your life. So that's real liberation. We give up all this false business that we've been doing for millions and millions of births. This is uh, anyata rupam. And we're re- reinstated in our original transcendental position, going back, back, back home, back to God, and take, take up that. And it's, every day is a new adventure, in relation with Krishna. So that's Bhuta Bhavana, Bhuta Shibhu, Deva Deva Jagatpate. But the first installment is all of these are like the glories of the God, because this is the Bhuti Yoga, you know, he's talking about Bhuta Bhavana, oh, the origin of everything, the Lord of everything, the Lord of the demigods, the Lord of the entire universe. So it's all Lord, 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 which means that we're servants. That's in that position. And we're going to be, be now studying. Uh, he's going to ask him, please tell me in detail how. We, you can meditate you even in this, on, in this material world because this is where, this is where we start. You've got you to start from where you're at. So here we are, three, three blocks from the ocean. We go down in the ocean and we remember this verse. Krishna says, our bodies of water, I am the ocean, especially the Pacific Ocean. It's the biggest ocean, you know. So you can be impressed by that, that glory, you know. Anything you see, and he, he gives a whole list here. So this is one way that we can, we can cultivate our awareness of God in everything, even in our ordinary life. We had some of that in the seventh chapter, ninth chapter, and now in the tenth chapter. Okay, any questions on this verse? Arjuna is, is glorifying Krishna, and now he's going to ask him to, to please now give me more details about your, your glories. So, and it's for us. Okay, text 16. Vaktamar hastashe shena. All right, let's try that one again. Vaktamar hasya sheshena Divya yatma vabhuta yaha Yabir vabhuti bir lokan Imam stvam vyapa dishtasi Please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you pervade all these world, worlds. Purport. In this verse, it appears that Arjuna is already satisfied with his understanding of the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna. By Krishna's grace, Arjuna has personal experience, intelligence, and knowledge, and whatever else a person may have, and through all these agencies, he has understood Krishna to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For him, there is no doubt. Yet he is asking Krishna to explain his all-pervading nature. People in general, and the impersonalists in particular, concern themselves mainly with the all-pervading nature of the Supreme. So Arjun is asking Krishna how he exists in his all-pervading aspect through his different energies. One should know that this is being asked by Arjun on behalf of the common people. So Arjun is, he, he said, I accept you as the Supreme Personality of God, as the truth, everything you say. And more or less, he could skip to the end of the 18th chapter, I will do as you say, where's the battle? But there's more that we need to learn. And so the, the, here, the rest of the 10th chapter, 11th chapter, universal form, as he goes on, is, is, is all meant for our uh, edification. Katam vidya maham yogims Dvam sada parichintayan Keshu keshu chabhadeshu Chintyo si bhagavan maya O oh Krishna, O oh Supreme Mystic, how shall I constantly think of you, and how shall I know you? In what various forms are you to be remembered, O oh Supreme Personality of Godhead? Purport. As it is stated in the previous chapter, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is covered by his yoga maya. Only surrendered souls and devotees can see him. Now Arjun is convinced that his friend, Krishna, is the Supreme Godhead. But he wants to know the general process by which the all-pervading Lord can be understood by the common man. Common men, including the demons and atheists, cannot know Krishna because he is guarded by his yoga maya energy. Again, these questions are asked by Arjun for their benefit. The superior devotee is concerned not only for his own understanding, but for the understanding of all mankind. So Arjun, out of his mercy, because he is a Vaishnav, a devotee, is opening for the common man the understanding, uh, the understanding of the all-pervasiveness of the Supreme Lord. He addresses Krishna specifically as yogin because Krishna is the master of the yoga maya energy. 
by which he is covered and uncovered to the common man. The common man who has no love for Krishna cannot always think of Krishna. Therefore, he has to think materially. Arjuna is considering the mode of thinking of the materialistic persons of this world. The words keshu keshu chabaveshu refer to material nature. The word bhava means physical things. Because materialists cannot understand Krishna spiritually, they are advised to concentrate the mind on physical things and try to know how Krishna is manifested by physical representations. So this is a common theme, actually, and that is that the great devotees, those who already realized uh, Krishna fully, they uh, take the trouble, the intimate associate, take the trouble to walk among the ignorant and to try to enlighten them in devotional service. Because this is what Krishna wants. In other words, you should always remember that, that Krishna is a person, that, and he claims, as he, as he says in chapter 14 at the beginning, that I am the seed-giving father of all. So we're all related to him intimately. And we've forgotten all about him, but he hasn't forgotten about us. We're his wayward children here in the material world. So he's always, he always periodically comes himself or he has, uh, sends a representative, leaves his books, inspires his intimate devotees to uh, work as hard as possible to give him to others. You know, this is a wonderful mood that Pallad Maharaj has. Pallad is one of the, there's, there's 12 Mahajans, great devotees, who are, uh, uh, they, they understand fully the, the supreme dharma of bhakti. And uh, they appear throughout the Bhagavatam. The most prominent in, is, among them all is Narada Muni, who appears in every single uh, canto. But Lord Brahma is also prominent. He has his prayers in the third, third canto. He has wonderful prayers in the 14th, uh, can, 14th chapter, the 10th canto, in which he's uh, giving us so much good instruction. You know? But Pallad Maharaj, perhaps more than any other, personifies the mood of sacrifice for giving Krishna to others. Even in, in it, it's such, a, such an incredible uh, dramatic scene. He's a, he's a small child born in a demonic family and it wasn't understood by his father who was like the original demon in the universe, Saranya Kashipu. Even his name indicates his demonic qualities. You know, Hiranya Kashipu, what it means? Hiranya is gold. Kashipu is soft bedding. So, you know, soft bedding, you know, and the bed companion. So that's <laughs> what the demons are after. Sensual pleasure and money. You know, this is the demonic thing. But, but interestingly, the backstory is that he's, they're actually attendants. They're great devotees from Vaikuntha who, who uh, uh, offended the Kumaras, and so they were cursed to take three births. So they, they got a choice. Either you can have six or ten births as devotees, and, uh, or you can come back after three births as demons. So they wanted to get back as soon as possible. So they took demons. So there's three pairs, there, and they're all prominent in Krishna Lila. One is Aranyakashipu, who who's commemorated because he's killed directly by Lord Nishingadev. We sing every, after every arti. Lord Nishingadev protects the devotees, and he also protects their devotion. So he's, he's very important, you know, in, uh, incarnation. But he's famous for this, you know, fury because Prahlad, his dear devotee, was being tormented by Aranyakashipu, his father. So, uh, so, so Pallad, even though he, he was, he, 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 just, just imagine that here's this enormous demon who became very powerful through austerity. Austerity it can, make, can strengthen the demons or it can strengthen the devotees. It's a form of power. And he practiced uh, incredible uh, austerities for thousands of years to become immortal because he couldn't become immortal, you know, but he became very, very powerful. So then his, his, his child, Pallad, was uh, in the womb while he's performing those austerities, and he took birth, and, uh, but his mother spent some time in the ashram of Narada Muni. I won't go into detail. And he's preaching to her. But she's worried about her husband. She doesn't hear that much. You know, she's worried about how's, how's Aranyakashibu doing, and when is he coming back for me. But Pallad, in the womb, he's hearing. You know, that, ha that happens. I'll tell you a story. I, uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know, that I recorded the whole Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita. I have it, I can give it to you, um, including the purports and everything. And uh, I, I, I used to provide it on the tapes, those cassette tapes in the 90s, you remember those? And so, 
So, <laughs> yeah. so there was uh, there's one lady who was a, a nice devotee, and she was a, lived, they, she and her husband lived outside. We did programs at their house. So she got a set, and I said, you know, the child after seven months, Barbara said they become conscious in there, you know. So you can play it, play it. So she started playing that. That uh, she was listening, but the child was hearing in the womb, you know. So uh, when the child was born, she started bringing him to the Sunday feast. You know, she'd be carrying him, you know, and he'd be. <laughs> so I would, as I do now, I would, then, then I would lead the kirtan sometimes. And as soon as he hear my voice, the, the baby would get all excited because <laughs> he recognized the voice. <laughs> but so Pallad, he was hearing the voice, but he was also understanding the words. <laughs> So he, when he came out, he was a great devotee. Now the Muni, he's, he's a preacher. He, he is empowered. You know, the Shakti Abhish. Shakti means energy. You know, that's, I'm sure that's an English word by now. And when, you, when, when Krishna infuses uh, the, the Shakti in someone, you become Shakti Abhish. You mean you're empowered. And there's different powers. So Narada Muni has Bhakti Shakti. Means that whoever he meets, he can he can give bhakti to and make them devotees, even even uh, hunters, you know, and people. Uh, so here, Prahlad, you know, he had a chance to be. So anyway, so Prahlad came out, and and then he was in the school, you know, he was being in grade school. His father didn't know that he was a great devotee. He thought I'll train him to be a regular demon, teach him Machiavelli stuff, you know, and divide and conquer and everything, you know. So then, then the, 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 what happens is that. Uh, so he comes home, and you know, not, and instead of report cards, you know, we, we still have, I don't know, they still have report cards. So he, he asked his friend, "What's the best thing you learned today, Prahlad?" He has him, you know, he's very fond of his young son. You know, he's grooming him to be the next Ranyakashipu. So what's the best thing you learned? So he answers this, this famous verse. Prabhu would love this verse. Tat sadomanye sudavari dehi nam sadasam bhagvigne diyam sadgahat hit hit vatna patam griyaman dukupam vanam katoya dharamashriyeta. Now you have to understand the backstory that Hiranyakashipu had a brother named Hiranyaksha. It means he was always looking for gold. They were, they were twins, and he had already been killed by another incarnation of Krishna, Varaha Dev. Some of you know that story. You know he killed him in the water, in, in the in the ocean. So Hiranyakashipu saw saw Hari Krishna as his arch enemy. You know all the demons knew, but he especially did. So here Pallad says, here's what I learned. He didn't call him father. He called him Asuya Varya, the be oh, best of the demons, you know. <laughs> Tat Sadhu Mani. Now Sadhu we know means a great devotee, but it also means very good. The best thing I learned, Tat Sadhu Manye, in my opinion, oh, best of the demons. For, best for whom? For the living entities who are struggling in this material, in this material world and are always disturbed because they're holding on to what is impermanent for dear life. This, this body, the relationships, all these different things. It's just like you're in an ocean and you're in, you, know, you have capsized, but you know, thank God I got a uh, life preserver. But the life preserver is leaking. How, how anxious are you going to be? Is, it gonna, is someone going to come before it, I sink? You know? So that's the story. Sada samud vigna. Udvigna means disturbed. A sadgrahat, the holding to the impermanent. So what's the advice? This is what I learned, Father. Hit vatnapatam griyamanda kupam. She give up this materialistic family life and go to the forest. And it's under some of the commentaries. That's Vrindavan. Go to Vrindavan and take shelter of Hari. That's the last thing his father expected to hear or wanted to hear from his son. <laughs> his arch enemy, Hari. So he didn't blame his son. He's just a child. He looked over at the teachers, you know, with his gaze. And they, we didn't teach him. We didn't teach him that. You know, we don't know where he learned it. <laughs> so this whole dynamic. So the, but the point is, Pallad kept preaching that way. Yeah, and his father, you know, finally lost his patience and he decided to kill his own son. Not himself, but he assigned it to his henchmen. So it describes, you know, they came at him with their swords and their, sh their, their spears and he couldn't be hurt. He was meditating. He was fully absorbed in remembering Krishna. He was completely protected. So they tried everything. They threw him under a big elephant, crushed him, couldn't be crushed. Poison didn't affect him. Boiling oil. No effect. Threw him off a cliff. There's a, there's a painting where Krishna is holding him and protects him as he gently brings him down. <laughs> so then his father became completely frustrated, you know. And uh, he said, and somewhere along the way, I forget the exact, he, he speaks this, this, this uh, verse defining what bhakti is. 
This is real education, Father. Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Bandanam, Sakim, Dasyam, Sakim, Atmani, Vedanam. Nine processes of devotion, beginning with hearing, chanting, and remembering, which are these senses. So anyway, finally his father tries to kill him himself. He says, where is he? Where, you, you say your Lord is everywhere. Where is he? He's everywhere, Father. He's in the heart, you know. Is he in this pillar? Yes, he's in there. I mean, he punches the pillar and out comes the Shingadev. <laughs> out comes the Shingadev. Roaring, you know, and it's piercing the universe. And he's a little taken aback, you know. Then he says, I'll fight him. He can't beat me. I've got all these powers, you know. So anyway, there's a whole backstory to it, how he had got to these benedictions from Brahma that he couldn't be killed by any weapon, he couldn't be killed in the day and the night, he couldn't be killed by any creature. You know, so now the Shringadev is not any created creature. He's half man, half, half lion. He kills him with his nails. That's not really a weapon. He killed him in the, the threshold. It's not inside or outside. Uh, he killed him on the lap. It's not in the air. It's not like that. So all, all of Brahma's uh, conditions were solved, and then he ripped them apart, which we sing every day. We sing it in, for the arati. Tabakata kamala bade na kamal bhuta shringam. Adbhuta shringam means incredibly sharp. Your incredible, your your wonderfully sharp nails. That's how you you pull the part of the wasp-like body of Hiranyakashipu. This is Jayadev Goswami. So this is part of the uh, the the vibhutis of of Krishna, and uh, uh, so. But here it, it, it's it's more on the level of okay, all, all the ordinary people. How can they be aware of you in this world? Whatever, basically, whatever is. Uh, very beautiful, very powerful, very impressive. You know, that's they should think of you. That you, you, it's because you have, uh, you know, given a, a little part of your your power. And and at the end, Krishna says, "What's the use of all of this? All this list? With the tiny spark of my splendor, I pervade this entire universe." You know, so that's you know leading up to chapter eleven, where we really get the, the amazing you know glory of the Lord in the universal form. And it's all simply to impress us that we're very tiny. You know, this is our Lord, we should serve Him. That's, that's the best thing we can do. Otherwise, com, you know, we can't compete. That's, that was our big mistake. So it's to, to really give us the, the tattva of who we are in comparison to the Lord. So we'll take that first step of serving and gradually we can become more intimately involved with Krishna. As usual, I've gone on too long. Any questions on this particular verse? How can I know you? Oh, Bhagavan. All right. Yes. I He gives them all a chance to know, but the thing about the atheists is that they, they don't want to know. They don't want to, they, 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 they disbelieve in God so that they can be little gods. And, and that's, uh, this, that's a material disease, that has to be cured. And so Krishna comes and gives a chance, but he, he gives us free will. The free will has to be there. Why? Because otherwise there's no meaning to bhakti. L love has to be freely given. Krishna does not want to, is not going to force us to serve him. But he's going to present us with all good reasons and, and, and uh, try to attract us, even try to trick us, you know. Come, come to the festival and dance, you know. Okay, you know. And then they'll hear the holy name, maybe they'll start chanting a little bit. <laughs> In other words, there's all kinds of strategies by which to somehow uh, attract the, 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 the soul. But the ultimate idea is to get, get the knowledge, understand who we really are, and to freely uh, agree to, to serve Krishna and, and to chant the holy name. So that's the, that's the problem. The atheists are sworn enemies, just like Aranyakashipu. He had to be killed. Now ultimately he went back to God after three births. But, but um, it's, it's a great lesson. If you're an enemy of God or indifferent, then uh, Krishna remains hidden. Yoga Maya, Ma, Yoga Maya and Mahamaya are actually the same personality. Mahamaya is an expansion of Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya in the spiritual world hides Krishna's uh, divinity so that we can have an intimate relationship with him. So like Mother Yashoda, if she, you know, there's a certain point where she sees uh, Krishna was accused of eating earth as a little baby, you know, they, they all ate earth. So he denied it. 
my brother is lying about me. We had a, we had a quarrel. Now they're trying to pin this on me. You know, it's not so. <laughs> somebody said, "Well, prove it." You know, open your mouth. So he opens his mouth, and suddenly she sees the whole universe in there. You know, and then she suddenly her yoga maya is broken. The, 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 and and she says, "Oh!" And I was thinking this Krishna is, is my son, and Nanda is his father, and you know, and Krishna didn't want that. You know, so he pulled the curtain down again so that she would think that she's his mother because that's what he, that's how he enjoys the, the rasa, hiding his divinity so he can have all these intimate relationships. But that's a very advanced state. First, we have to come, you know, in our state, we need to come, I'm very insignificant. I can't really enjoy separately. If I do, I'm going to suffer. That's the source of my suffering. My favorite verse, Yehi sang sparshija boga dukhe yona yevate. The pleasures that come from contact of the senses, including the mind, are the sources of misery. And they have a beginning and an end. So the wise don't take their pleasure there. Well, how do they enjoy? Previous verse. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it's leaving me. But they're in touch with Brahman, and they enjoy en endless happiness because it's spiritual. And there's a verse in the purple, which I do remember. Uh, um, Parabrahman, Parabrahman, Supreme Brahman, Krishna, as Arjun says, uh, is, is, is uh, an, um, Ananda yogi no anante satyananda chadabhini. They, the real yogis, bhakti yogis, they enjoy unlimited happiness in touch with Brahman, serving the Supreme Brahman. And therefore, the Supreme Brahman is also known as Rama. Rama means Krishna, who's the supreme enjoyer, enjoying this ananda. We can take part in that enjoyment by trying to give him enjoyment. We're part and parcel of Krishna. If, we, if Krishna enjoys and we are conscious of doing that, then we also enjoy. That's what the real bhakti is. And there's no limit to it. All right, we have a few minutes. Let's do this next verse. And then yes, lead up to Krishna's answer, which we'll do tomorrow. Vistade natmano yogam Vibhutim chajanardana Bhuya katiya triptirhi Shinvato nasti memritam O Janardhan, again please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulences. I am never satiated in hearing about you, for the more I hear, the more I want to taste the nectar of your words. Purport. A similar statement is, uh, was made to Sutta Goswami by the rishis of Naimasharanya, headed by Shaunaka. This statement is, Vayam tu na vichipyama uttama shloka vikrame yachinvatam rasagyanam svaru svaru pade pade. One can never be satiated even though one continuously hears the transcendental pastimes of Krishna, who is glorified by excellent prayers. Those who have entered into a transcendental relationship with Krishna, uh, Krishna relish at every step the descriptions of the pastimes of the Lord. Bhagavatam 1119. Thus, Arjun is interested in hearing about Krishna and specifically how he remains as the all-pervading Supreme Lord. Now, as far as Amritam, nectar, is concerned, any narration or statement concerning Krishna is just like nectar. And this nectar can be perceived by practical experience. Modern stories, fiction, and histories are different from the transcendental pastimes of the Lord in that one will tire of hearing mundane stories, but one never tires of hearing about Krishna. It is for this reason only that the history of the whole universe is replete with references to the pastimes of the incarnations of Godhead. The Puranas are histories of bygone ages that relate the pastimes of the various incarnations of the Lord. In this way, the reading matter remains forever fresh despite repeated readings. So Prabhupada often mentions how the Bhagavad Gita is like that. You can read it again and again. Like we've been going through, this is like I mean, the tenth time since I've been here, you know. And it's not like, you know, it ever, it ever gets uh, stale. These, these verses are, because they're dealing with eternal subject matters that are, you know, imp are, are central for the soul. And we're actually experiencing the presence of Krishna through his words. So even though we, we at different levels of understanding or whatever, there's still a, an element of transcendence there that you can, you can perceive. 
and 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 uh, you know I I've been going through this book for 45 years, 50 years, and I find it uh, ever fresh. And there's always new things you can learn here. The, 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 you're actually we don't realize it, or but it, but it but it but it has its effect when we chant these verses, when we when we read and we hear, we're associated with Krishna, and uh, he's pleased by that and gives us some realization. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, you know, it varies. It, it, it's a few months, a few months. You know, maybe maybe five, six months, because uh, uh, you know it depends on how far afield I get. If, if I'm reading it three or four verses at a time, it, it's quicker. But especially this chapter and this section is so rich that I, you know, I tend to spend more time in it. All right, it's time for one or two poems. <laughs> So this is, uh, let's see. Okay, so this is, this is a, uh, a prayer that I, um, I'm fortunate to have memorized long ago that I offer to Radha Girid Hari every morning when I, we greet the deities. Pashupada Vadenya Nanda Navadametang Mohorati He Yuvam Bhavatu Panayo Bhave Bhave Bhavato Reva Padambu Jeshume. O Radha Krishna, children of the best of cowherd men, this single boon I beg from you again and yet again. In all the countless births my endless sins will make me meet. Let all my love flow toward your luscious, lustrous lotus feet. <laughs> And here's, here's, here's one that you can just listen to the sound. Rupa Goswami. That's Rupa Goswami. This is also. Udasi Parispura Dindina Mindindina Mandira Svajola Sitan Hanamanganata Mangala Mangala Satchandanam Bande. So upon his chest is manifest the mark of Goddess Shri. It's the Goddess of Fortune. Upon his chest is manifest the mark of Goddess Shri, and there too rests the best of reeds, a temple for the bees who worship him by singing hymns that limb his loving play. Now, there's a word, L-I-M-N, that means to describe. L-I-M-B is your arm. L-I-M-N is to describe. So let me just start over. Upon his chest is manifest the mark of God as Shri, and there to rest the best of reeds, a temple for the bees, who worship him by singing hymns that limb his loving play, while Shri Hari most gleefully acclaims the way they pray. For Braja's love-mad milkmaids and for all the Brahmins' wives, Sri Krishna is the ultimate good fortune in their lives. His sandal paste anointed limbs bedim the full moon's glow unto the lotus feet of Sri Hari. I bow down low. I don't know where this word, this is a word, maybe he made it up, but it's, it, it's, it's an onomatopoeia for bees. I've never seen that word, but mandira. Mandira is the temple, say indindina mandira. Yeah, the play on words. The Sanskrit aesthetics are just off the charts. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. How do you want? <laughs> <laughs>